with another exciting day of Worlds coverage. As always, I'm Dan Tartaglione, uh, also known as DTartag1 on pretty much everything. So if you want to get a hold of me, that's the easiest way. Uh, this is day 1B, essentially, <laughs> of uh, world, our Worlds coverage. Uh, we're about to get started with uh, Heat 3. Uh, however, you know what, before we get started with Heat 3, let's get a recap of what happened yesterday. So, yesterday we had Heat 1, and that started at 1 a.m. Eastern. That was mostly our European pod. It, uh, mostly, there were a few Americans. Uh, I know Kendall Hallman was there, I, uh, Matt Lutz was there. Uh, but yeah, that was mostly our European group. Uh, we had some really exciting games yesterday in that one. Uh, looking back, uh, you can see the standings from yesterday. Uh, Bastion went undefeated. Like, congrats to Bastion, man. Going undefeated, uh, pretty nice. Uh, Paul Myers, who's over in, I believe, Florida or Georgia in that area, he went 5-1. I mean, that right there shows the Americans can handle, they can, uh, compete with the Europeans. Uh, Crypto, uh, uh, Tom Kelly, uh, Timo, uh, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna, I don't know your last name, uh, Zimowat, uh, Solid Snack, uh, Matt Lutz, and Sagnet all went four and two, so all those players made it to next Saturday, so... Uh, so like I said, we saw a lot of really close games. Uh, we did see a few games go to time. A little bit of drama, but you know what? I mean, it was a fun event just watching the... Uh, we did see a invasion being played from uh, DDM. There was a few EBOs. He played, uh, uh, again, DDM, David uh, De Fastanos, I believe is, is his last name, played uh, EBO as well. Uh, we saw an EBO that played Ancient Watering Hole and was just doing d one ping's damage. And this was actually against DDM. So that was probably the craziest game I saw yesterday. Uh, I believe we were streaming a little bit of that game, so go ahead and check that out. But outside of that, I mean, yeah, there was like there was uh, Bastion played CCT, a little bit of Legend. The most played deck, though, was Hitko. <laughs> Uh, no surprises to anybody there. I mean, Hitko's really, really, really strong right now. It's really good. I, myself, not a big fan of it, but you know what? Hey, a lot of people are. Uh, but going into Heat 2, uh, that was our later pod. That one started at around 10 a.m. Eastern and was mostly American players. So what was being played the most? Hitko. And the, uh, for Dark Side, Hunt Down V. Uh, that was the pod that included Justin Desai, Joe Olsen, uh, Chris Wirfs, Justin Miyashiro. So as you can see, like, uh, Joe Olsen pulled out the, uh, the 6-0. Uh, he beat, I know he beat, uh, Justin Desai at one point. Uh, so congrats to Joe going six and zero. That's a nice accomplishment right there. Uh, Justin Desai still finished five and one. So no, no. Uh, again, Justin is a really good player, and he goes five and one with his only loss to Joe Olson. So no surprises there. He makes day two. Uh, Chris Wirfs, uh, Justin Miyashiro uh, also made day two. Jared Consker coming off of the uh, top tube finish at the MPC. Uh, he went four and two. Uh, he was running a hunt down V that also started like the first light, uh, one of the first light sites. So a little bit different. Uh, Connor Britton uh, coming off a top four finish at the OCS finals, losing to Mr. Paul Myers, who's currently in the chat. Uh, hi, Paul. <laughs> uh, he went four and two. Uh, Brad Kipple, Gavin Oserland, and uh, Charlie. Charlie, uh, we saw yesterday played a watcher step. Uh, he actually played against Jared Consker and had a ridiculously close finish. Uh, that was one of the closer games that I actually was able to see yesterday. So, uh, we, like I said, we had a lot of close games. No real blowout. I know uh, Justin Desai actually played one of the longer, <laughs> not necessarily the longer game, but more of the chess matchy type of a game against Sam Tashimi. That was a great game if you like 
Star Wars CCG because of the fact is like it was such a chess match back and forth between the two players. So unfortunately, Sam didn't make it today too, but I mean he played really well. Uh, today, like I said, we're going to be starting with Heat Three. Heat Three, as you can see, are here are some of the people. Uh, looks like Matt Crowley and Casey Anus are going to be the tournament directors. But as you can see, there's some big day players in this one. This one's really loaded. Uh, you got Ryan Saracen, Drew Lichtenstein, uh, Chris Kelly. Uh, not the reigning NPC champion, but he did win it uh, two years ago. Uh, Greg Shaw. Greg Shaw, who's always seems to be in a top eight at an event. Chris Goglin, Hall of Famer. Uh, Kevin Yop, who is a European player, and he designs all of this, the... He does a lot of the foils, so if you want to support him go ahead and watch him today he'll be he'll be there brian twilliger who is a fine uh well, world's finalist bill Kafer coming off the top 18 at both the or tops eight at both uh the indoor grand prix and texas mini worlds uh kyle kruger world's finalist uh and then there's some guy named uh steven baroni who was uh he helped us uh stream yesterday so i mean he really hasn't done much of anything else besides that but yeah, I mean, I like this pod. This one's going to be a really loaded pod. Um, I expect to see a little bit. Uh, I expect to see some hunt down V. I expect to see some hitco. I, I do expect to see some other stuff though. I know uh, Drew had said yesterday what he's playing. I'm not going to announce it right now because we're about to get started soon. But uh, I know what he's playing. Um, I do expect. Chris to play Hitco. Uh, he basically is his, the designer of the deck. It is basically his baby, essentially. Um, and he has gone on record saying the best thing in Star Wars CCG is drawing a six. So I expect to see him playing Hitco. But outside of that, I do expect to see some Hunt Down V. It was popular yesterday. It is a, a pretty solid deck. Uh, surprisingly, like it doesn't do a lot it kind of is in that hitco area where you know what it's going to do but it's still really good at what it does and the inquisitors right now are just all over the place like people love the inquisitors and i'm great to, uh, i love to see that but that's our first heat and then we actually have one more heat for this weekend uh that is our heat four uh chris schoenthal the tournament advocate will be our tv and this one is highlighted by Matt Harrison Trainer. Uh, he won the NPC this year, or no, he won uh, Texas Mini Worlds. I'm sorry. Uh, it's also highlighted by. I, I want to say this one is, is the one that ha uh, has Hayes Hunter, or yeah, Hayes Hunter is also in this one. He uh, winner of the Grand Prix, winner of the NPC. So not only that, but they're also teammates of that old Team Five. So. That's going to be interesting to see, like, if they play each other, like, will they stop one from going into day two, or will both make it? Uh, unfortunately, Brian Fred had to drop from the event due to a, a work schedule, so he will not be playing in this, uh, in his heat. Uh, but we do have a player who is returning who is a world t champion. Uh, this heat is the other heat that has a world champion in it. And Matt Sokol, Matt Sokol returning to the game after a little bit of a hiatus in the last couple, uh, last year or so. So I'm glad to see Matt coming back and playing. But outside of that, I mean, looking at this heat, you have Ryan Jelson, who has made a top eight a couple times. Adam Trunzo, who's made the uh, top eight at, I, I want to say it was the uh, uh, Texas Mini Worlds uh, two years ago. But uh, no, he made uh, Continental's top eight uh, two years ago. Which seems like forever now. Mike Turner, who's always who plays well. Mike Kessling, uh, who is the I want to say he's the de facto leader of uh, Team Nine Million, as uh, Mr. Baroni likes to refer to them, or uh, Mike Kessling and his drinking buddies. So, and then you have the uh, the Sheriff of Gemp, Mr. Anthony Howard, Batmouse. So it's going to be exciting. Uh, I like this one's going to be uh, different because like the you have those uh, those the member of uh, Sokol's team. Um, ah man, I forget what they call themselves. I know it's like a up uh, team Albany. That's it. 
Uh, you So you see, like, you have the Aaron Kingery, Matt Sokol. So member of Team Albany, they like to play hunt or uh, head and base. So will we see a head and base in this match? Um, only we won't know until we actually see. So it, it's going to be a fun day of Star Wars. Uh, myself, I'm going to be streaming today. I have... Uh, Four more packs giveaway. I know uh, Bastion's going to be streaming. So if you want to watch some expert commentary, go in and tune on to Bastion. We'll have the multi Twitch channel up as well, so that way you can get Bastion and myself going. Uh, I'll post that as soon as everything is set to go. Uh, so right now we're just waiting on Casey to get this, the pairing starts. We're about four minutes outside of the start time. Uh, so until then, I'm gonna I'll be back with uh, the first round and uh, we'll have some Star Wars CCD going on today. So stay tuned, everybody.
Okay, good morning again, Star Wars fans. Uh, so, our first match of the day is going to be the illustrious Kyle Kruger and Bill, Taco Bill Kafer. So, it's going to be a fun match. Uh, Bill is on dark side, Kyle's on light side. Let's shuffle up the decks and play. So, right off the bat, we have an ISB versus an Hitco matchup. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a match of running thing for the day. We're going to see a lot of this kind of a matchup. Uh, the Bastion is currently streaming Ryan Saracen versus uh, Drew Lichtenstein. Uh, Ryan is playing Court and uh, Drew is playing Legend. So there we go. Uh, a different type of a deck. I mean, not a lot of people put a, uh, a lot of faith in Court. So surprise there. But uh, no surprise from Bill playing... Uh, ISB, he played it a lot during Tistus Mini Worlds. He has some success with it. Uh, Kyle playing Hiko. Again, as we said earlier, this deck is pretty much one of the, the favorite decks for a lot of people. Uh, Bill going out with the Imperial Arrest Order, Quad Drive Yards, and simple or uh, Security Precautions on the West Gallery. Or the Upper Walkway, sorry. Uh, Kyle starting, I feel the conflict, like my father before me, Walkling, and Twilight is upon me. Twilight is upon me, new V card from set 13. Um, pretty much you can pull uh, Yoda's Hut, and you get some act extra activation while Luke is with the Prophecy of the Force. So, Oh, thank you for uh, watching, and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Okay, Bill... Pulls his grabber, throws the impressive enforcement shield, so that way if he uh, has a card that's sensed, it would go to his use pile. Kyle pulls golden rod. And it looks like Bill is doing ISB things. Okay, so you see, okay, that's not a card that we normally see. The course on docking, babe. Okay, Kyle will pull out his grabber. And Bill getting out the Mustafar system, going to get the, the Vader's Castle out. Uh, players are offering a little bit of banter right now. Looks like Kyle, uh, he works right now, so he'd actually be at work right now. So I guess he's going to work right after this event. So, oof. But apparently he took off yesterday, so uh, he is well rested for this event. Okay, so Bill gets out Mustafar and the castle, and then we'll just draw a few cards, getting up to, I want to say, 11. Nope, Bill will stop at 10, saving two cards, and passing over turn to uh, Kyle. So, let's see what Kyle can do with this new type of a hit code. Uh, you see a lot of the, the same cards as before, but... Now you don't ha now you're not able to play all those episode one locations that you would normally see. So you can't play like the boss Nash Chamber, the uh, the planes, but you're getting Yoda's Hut. You're getting uh, a new Death Star Two Chasm Walkway that is a two two site. So there is that. Uh, but a lot of people have said the same thing. The activation for the deck is kind of limited. So you're you're so heavily reliant on Luke going down to a battleground. Okay, so Kyle will get out Yoda's Hut on his first turn. Now, if you notice, like, Bill is only giving Kyle three icons, so not a lot. Okay, Kyle's going to play Rescue in the Clouds. Let's look at the top three cards of his deck. Bill not grabbing. And Kyle's just going to draw. So both players just getting at one of their locations to get some activation going. Um, Kyle drawing up to 12 and saving 5. So not a bad strategy. 
Now I'm curious as to see if Bill is playing a his normal ISB that's like a trooper beat kind of a beatdown. Um, okay, Bill dropping out the stalker to Mustafar, so going up to space early. Not worried at all about. Uh, it doesn't seem like he's worried about space right now. Plays Lieutenant Pole Teardom to the stalker, so then he's going to draw the top part of his used pile. And he's also going to put out if Officer Evax, who is a really good ISB agent, uh, mostly because his game text doesn't matter. However, he's got a forfeit of five already printed, and then if you include, if you add Imperial Arrest Order, he's forfeit of seven. So that's really, really good. Okay, Bill going to search with the Imperial Arrest Order for a docking bay. There's no docking bay in there, and he'll draw his last card. So, Bill going down with the Stalker early, uh, forcing it maybe a possible drain of one. Uh, let's see if Kyle can retaliate on that, or if he's going to do just just bunker down on the ground and uh, wait for Bill to come down with a uh, ISB beat squad. Uh, he's going to activate. And I will say, I want to thank everybody who did watch yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish out the uh, afternoon, but I want to thank uh, everybody for tuning in uh, to all the events that were going on yesterday. So, uh, oh, Sean Dixon, you're watching this morning. Good. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit better. I think not. I was a little sleep deprived, but on top of that, I really didn't eat much. So I'm going to try and fix that today, uh, but we'll see. Okay, it looks like uh, Kyle going down with Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight, to the Coruscant 500 Republica. Uh, unfortunately, with this build of ISB, you really can't play any other site if you want to play Slip Sliding Away Virtual. Uh, I would love to see the PC do, do something else where you can actually get like a different ISB site because it's not really thematic with the 500 Republica. But hey, it's the best we got for right now. Okay, Kyle gets out the Saber and he'll play Secret Plans because... Kyle's now flipped, so he could actually start retrieving with his objective. And there's another new virtual card, Yoda, Master of the Force. So, power plus three when defending a battle, or while exactly two Jedi on the table. Well, Kyle's got two Jedi, so that makes sense. And then once per game, during any during your move phase, you may relocate to a battleground site as a regular move. Uh, so he can relocate anywhere, he just teleport. It's Yoda's power, apparently. Okay, and Kyle's going to play Rescue in the Clouds again to search, uh, look at the top three cards of his deck. Now, I wonder if we're going to see Kyle go ahead and pull Battle Plant. Uh, I know it's only a drain of one for Bill, but, and you're draining for three right now. Okay, Kyle's going to attempt to retrieve. And I'm going to believe Bill will not stack a card on I Feel the Conflict to cause that retrieval to be canceled. Okay, Kyle. Not sure why this is happening again, but Discord does not like me very much. Uh, Kyle playing An the new Anakin Skywalker, so that way he can uh, teleport the Prophecy of the Force. Uh, so next turn, he's actually threatening a drain of four. Bill will not grab it, so... New Anakin Skywalker, if I feel the conflict is on table, you can use it to pull a Death Star 2 site, or to relocate the, the 
Prophecy of the Force to a site. That's pretty good. Uh, the Lost. During a battle, if Luke is armed with his saber, choose to add one destiny to attrition or to cancel the game text of a character of ability less than four. That's a lot of characters. Um, Possibly. I mean, I haven't seen it recently, but I mean, it is always is possible. Bill going to play Tarkin's Bounty on... Officer Evax, who is a leader, uh, he did drain, and Kyle didn't play the battle plan, so he drained for free. Kyle lost Hera from his reserve deck. Notice Bill didn't search his deck before he played the Tarkin's Bounty. So, okay, and there's a strategic reserve. So now Bill can actually start canceling those drains. So, I mean, Kyle's going to drain for four next, uh, uh, a possible drain of four next turn. So Bill can put a non-unique Stormtrooper down onto the strategic reserves and cancel that. Uh, and now it looks like Bill's just going to draw up a few cards and pass turn. So this is now going to allow Bill... A little bit of time before he has to worry about that drain of four. Bill drawing up past thir uh, past twelve, and let's see when he decides to stop. Okay, fifteen, and then he'll play the Death Squadron assignment, so he can pull like a card with Death Squadron in the lore. Uh, he's going to get Admiral Ozzel. Ozzel has Death Squadron in his lore, so he can get that. Uh, other possible cards uh, that we see is like uh, Tyrant, the Vengeance, uh, the Avenger, Ozzel. So cards like that are grabbed from the Death Squadron assignment. Bill going to play Battle Order, so if Kyle wants to... So he can make Kyle pay a 3 to drain and then cancel it now, so... Kind of smart, so that's going to limit what Kyle can do. Kyle's going to use, first use his objective. And on the objective, it says, Once while this side up, once during your control phase, may peek at the top X cards from the top of your reserve deck, where X is the number of battlegrounds you occupy. Take one into hand and shuffle the reserve deck. So being that he occupies the one battleground, he'll be able to look at the one card and take that one card. So if he occupied uh, the west or the upper walkway, he could cancel, or he could uh, look at two. Okay, Kyle will attempt to drain. He pays the three. Uh, Bill plays a Death Trooper, canceling it. Death Trooper is pretty good with Krennic, Tarkin, or Thrawn, as they add a destiny. Uh, at any time, you may also, you pay piece this, car, uh, this character into the use pile to cancel, just on weapon destiny, target a leader. So if you have, like, Ozzel, or Krennic, Thrawn, Tarkin, even even Vader, you can place it into use pile to cancel that target. So Kyle still has fourteen cards to work with. Let's see what he's gonna do this turn. Now I'm just gonna it's gonna be interesting to see if Kyle has um, any space in his deck. Okay, Bill's gonna play Imperial Command. Kyle's gonna grab that. So we know that uh, Bill has an Ozzel in his hand. So I want to see who he's going to grab with that. Okay, it looks like he's going to grab Admiral Shirnu. Uh, Shirnu adds to the four strain where you have star, uh, star Destroyers within two parsecs of them. So just probably going to drop that Shirnu onto the Stalker. That way he's, uh, it can start draining for two. Okay, Kyle's just going to draw up. So both players are playing pretty conservative right now. Uh, Bill doing the lone point of damage so far. Okay, Kyle drawing up to 22 cards now into his hand. And he will attempt to retrieve Hera. Uh, I think if you're Bill, you might want to consider stacking a card on I Fill the Conflict, but uh, Bill does not do it. So Kyle gets the uh, Hera back.
Bill activates his 12. I slept a little bit. Uh, I, I rested. And yeah, I got like seven hours of sleep maybe. So hopefully uh, today goes well. But I know we'll have a plethora of uh, commentators today, so that's going to be good. Okay, so Admiral Shiranu comes down. Uh, Bill also going to drop Agent Callus onto the upper walkway. You know what? I'm I enjoy it. I, this is I look forward to streaming. I've looked forward to doing commentary. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love playing, but this is just the next best thing. So he'll use Callus's game text to look at the top two cards of his deck. Uh, he'll then choose a card to take into his hand. He's going to take Corporal Vandalay. Vandalay will allow him to, once he's deployed, to take a ISB agent's back into his hand. So you kind of want to uh, hold on to that Vandalay until you really need an ISB agent. Uh, Bill going to draw up Corporal Dresselin and Sergeant Eye Roll. And he's going to also drop Corporal Obrick. So he does flip now. So now Bill can start doing drains of two and two at the locations. Uh, Kyle has a nice big hand. And he's going to be activating. He's going to have 16 force to work with this turn. So you got to think he's going to do something at least about these three characters or these uh, four characters at the uh, the walkway. Okay, Bill going to draw up a few cards and pass turn. So let's see what Kyle can do about those uh, characters at the walkway. Uh, I don't think he's going to come down to Mustafar. But he could. Uh, Bill did save two cards. So, I mean, if he needs to, that would allow him to play an Imperial Command. But we'll see. Okay, Kyle's going to look at the top card of his deck with He Will Bring Balance. And then he's going to place the card onto his force pile with Like My Father Before Me. So now he's got 17 cards. Okay, so looking at some of the other decks right now, we do have a WAF. Oh, so we have... Four Hunt Down Vs. Uh, looks like we have three legends. Uh, we have a WAP. Robbie's playing WAP. Uh, again, Ryan Saracen is playing Court. Uh, we have two Shadow Collectives. Actually, looks like we have uh, four legends. Actually, I'm sorry about that. Uh, we have a Hunt. Oh, uh, we have a. There's good in him. We have ISB. We have Chris Goglin playing TTO. We do have a, a Wado. I have a plethora of hit codes, like I said. We have a QMC. We do have... And we have a few watcher steps, and we also have a Bestman CRV deck. Interesting. Okay, so Kyle's going to play Evac Control. On the Evac Control, he has imp uh, Impressive, Most Impressive, Anakin Skywalker, and Hera. Okay, so Obi-Wan comes down. Let's see what Obi-Wan's going to do about those four characters at the upper walkway. And joining Obi-Wan is Ahsoka Tano, just like in the movies. And so, it doesn't look like Kyle attempted to force drain this turn. And there's a Ray with lightsaber as well. Okay, so Kyle coming down with three characters, two of them with a lightsaber. One will make all of the... Uh, Battle Destiny, uh, Battle Destiny's minus one, so. Okay, Bill has three Battle Destiny, though. Okay, and he plays the Trooper Assault, so that's going to add to his power. And add six to his power. 
But again, Kyle has two lightsabers, so... Now, I mean, Bill does have three Destiny, but uh, again, Kyle has EVAC control down, so you can easily just take a card off of it and cancel uh, two of those Destiny. Okay, so he's going to swing with Obi-Wan at Dresslin. He draws a one for Battle Destiny and a one. Oh, that's not... I don't think that gets it done. No, Dresslin's a two, so no. Okay, but he's got a Jedi Levitation, so he's going to be able to cancel that solo. And he draws a six, so there's a six, so that's gonna uh, Dresslin's gonna be hit. Uh, Dresslin's important, uh, important because with I roll, he adds a battle destiny. Okay, action sh is on Bill at this point. Bill passes. Ray's going to swing at Callus. Draws another one, so that's three ones for Kyle being drawn. Uh, he did draw a six with one of the wings, and he draws a four. I believe that should, yeah, that should be enough to hit the Callus, so he'll be able to retrieve, but he doesn't have anything in his lost pile, so no retrieve there. Uh, but unfortunately for Kyle, he doesn't have a battle destiny. But again, he did get rid of two of those characters. Okay, he's going to take a card off the evac control. He takes Captain Harris and Dola, so Bill only has one battle destiny there. Uh, impressive, most impressive, and an Anakin Skywalker V. Bill draws a five for destiny, so that brings him up to 21 power. Kyle has 15. Kyle's going to have to lose one of those characters. Probably going to be Obi-Wan. Uh, Ray is pretty good there. Yeah. And Ahsoka's pretty good as well. So, yeah. Obi-Wan is the character you want to lose. Bill, unfortunately, has to lose two, though. Bill does have two characters to come uh, and a, car, um, a hand of 11. So, we might see him come down with a couple of characters and uh, retaliate against that Ray and the Ahsoka. But if you're Bill... Uh, it could be worse, but at the same time, it's not terrible because you occupy for battle order. So he'll be able to train for two in space now. Uh, we do know that Bill has a uh, Corporal Vandalay in his hand. So again, he could put Vandalay out and then bounce a ISB agent to his hand. But we'll see what he wants to do. So there's a drain of two. Okay, Kyle's going to lose. Help me, Obi-Wan, Kenobi, and quite a mercenary. Pretty good card against uh, Scum, so. And Kyle's also going to lose a Skywalker's from his hand. Skywalker's is a Destiny 5 interrupt that if Luke and Leia are in battle together, they can add 2-2 two, two, two Destiny. Uh, it also cancels Imperial Barrier. Okay, Bill looks with Imperial Rest Order for Docking Bay. There aren't any in there. So Kyle gets a Verify. Okay, looking at some of your other games right now. Uh, games are still pretty early. Uh, I see that Greg Shaw is currently down by seven in Life Force. Uh, Robbie is currently up by four. Uh, Drew is up on Ryan by a little bit. Um... Chris Kelly's looking pretty good. Gogolin down a little bit. Again, Gogolin's playing TTO. He's playing against the Watcher set right now, so that could be 
difficult. Uh, Kevin Yomp is playing a QMC today. So. Okay, so Bill's coming down. He's got the Death Trooper that he had on the Strategic Reserves. He also drops a Car uh, Captain Phasma. So, again, he's got Destiny there. Now, if only he had a Tarkin. Um, I do think there's going to be a few erratas. Um, I think the mall is pretty strong. I really do. I know a lot of people aren't playing it. just because they want to play with what they know. And, I mean, there's also Hunt Down V. Hunt Down V is really solid. I, I think we might see uh, some tweaks to the Inquisitors. Uh, they're really, really good. They really are. Um, outside of that, I mean, light side is the problem right now is light side has just so many options. Dark side just doesn't. Um, I, I know that we see a lot of dark side, a lot of different dark side decks, but I can almost guarantee you like people are playing with, with what they know. That's why uh, hunt down V is pretty good. Like I said, um, but I, I think there's going to be some change. There's got to be some changes. Like the metal right now isn't as good as it could be. So, but th this is just my personal opinion. Okay, so back into our game. Bill decided to uh, deploy the Death Trooper, Phasma, and Ozel. He's not going to battle. He is going to retrieve Callus with the objective, and then Kyle is going to play Anakin Skywalker to take a Death Star 2 sight into his hand, so he does get the Chasm walkway out of his deck. Uh, it looks like we have a second streamer today. Uh, Timo, uh, who advanced out of the, uh, first paw, uh, the first heat, is also streaming. He's streaming the Chris Gogolin versus Eric game. Chris, again, playing TTO. Eric playing I Watch Your Step. Yes, and we also have Bastion streaming as well. Thank you, Casey. Okay, so we're on to Kyle's turn. Kyle activates, and he'll use the objective to look at the top two cards of his deck. And he's going to play a Sorry About the Mess on Ray. Ray's going to swing her lightsaber. I'm probably going to guess it. Fa no, he's going to swing at the Death Trooper. Okay, and this is because he can't target any of the leaders there, but he can get rid of the Death Trooper. He draws a... Leia Rebel Princess and a Anakin Skywalker. So he hits that Death Trooper. It goes bye bye. So now he can swing at Ozzo or Phasma. And Kyle's going to be able to retrieve here. Okay, sorry about the mess goes to the lost pile. Kyle does retrieve the Skywalkers. And we'll probably see him attempt to drain here. We do know that he lost one um, Obi-Wan already in a battle. Okay, Kyle's going to pour out Ezra down to the Vader's castle. 
Ezra gained a lot of uh, popularity as uh, we see Maul's hut essentially being played in some decks. Uh, Ezra being the only character that can go down there for a light side, so kind of makes sense. Uh, joining Ezra is Obi-Wan, so now Kyle can attempt to pay to drain there. Uh, I think if you're Kyle, you don't want to leave Ahsoka and Rey by themselves at the uh, the walkway at the Cloud City. So you either want to land a Dobreed them to... Okay, never mind. Kyle's going to initiate a battle here. And Bill's going to play Trooper Assault again. So Bill, playing the Imperial Command early to grab Shirnu, allowed him to now play that Trooper Assault and get it back into his deck. Okay, Ray is going to swing at Phasma. He draws a 3, so he needs a 2 or higher to hit her. He draws a 5, so yeah, Ray's going to hit Phasma. Not like the movies at all. But Ray hits Phasma. He'll retrieve 1. He retrieves that sorry about the mess that he played in the, his control phase. And probably going to see him take a card off the evac control here. Kyle does, is able to draw for Destiny this turn. Okay, so there is the card off of Evac Control. Soka's game text does not come into play here, so she will not subtract one from the Battle of Destiny. But more importantly, Bill's only getting one Destiny instead of two. So I think it's a fair trade for Kyle. Uh, Bill is currently up by seven before Destiny. So we're probably going to see at least Ray go away here. Uh, Soka has a little bit more staying power. Ooh, Kyle draws a one for Battle Destiny. And Bill draws. Bill draws a one himself, so we saw two ones being draw. So Bill wins by seven. So maybe we won't see Ray. Okay, Bill winning the battle will now be able to retrieve one with Phasma. So he he's going to retrieve the Death Trooper. Now, I think if you're Kyle, yeah, you lose the Ahsoka because that way, if Bill does come down to retaliate against the Ray, you have to still have the lightsaber. Okay, and Bill's going to uh, just lose the uh, Ozzel. He loses Ozzel because now he can get Ozzel back if he wants with his objective. So, probably going to see Kyle draw maybe one or two cards here and then just pass turn. Uh, he can retrieve, he could retrieve this turn as well, but again, if you're Bill, you might want to stack a card on that field of conflict. Oh, Bill's going to, no, Kyle's going to use the Yoda's once per game text to move Yoda over to the upper walkway. This will now keep Ray kind of safe there. Okay, Kyle uses Like My Father Before Me to place a card onto his force pile. He'll use the objective to retrieve something. Uh, I know there's Ahsoka. He's got, he doesn't have heading into the medical frigate. So let's see. He's going to attempt to uh, retrieve Ahsoka Tano. Bill will not, so no cards will be stacked on I Feel the Conflict. So Ahsoka goes back into Kyle's deck. Bill's going to use I, uh, Cold Feet to grab. Don't, do they have code clearance? So if Kyle plays Jedi Levitation to tr attempt to retrieve a character, he can stack that card onto that, and that would negate any of Kyle's retrieval. Okay, as Ezra's on the table, Bill must choose now to either let Kyle activate two or to negate two of his activation. He'll let Kyle activate two. And he'll activate 12 himself. There's a drain of 2 at Mustafar. Kyle loses. He loses the Chasm walkway from his hand. So we won't see anybody go down there. I think Kyle wants to keep the amount of battleground sites to a minimum. And then he loses a Ray with Lightsaber from his reserve deck. That might 
come back to haunt him a little bit. Okay, Allegiant General Pride coming down. Pride, uh, while with a resistance character, adds one destiny. So he gets another destiny from that. Sergeant Barrack coming down. Barrack's good because when in a battle with another biker scout, you may draw one destiny and subtract that amount from opponent's attrition and total power. Kind of like a uh, carrot. He, he's just like the Bright Hope. So that's a pretty good card. General... General Navarre coming down as well. Navarre looking at the top card of Bill's reserve deck. Kyle playing Rescue in the Clouds. So again, Bill's getting Destiny, but the prob one of the problems is Kyle still has one card left on the evac control. That card is the impressive, most impressive V. Hey, Bill's going to put out some characters and they just pass turn. So Bill is okay with just drawing and retrieving and passing. He doesn't, I don't get why he doesn't, I, I understand him not wanting to battle, but. Oh, Kyle has the class of sabers in his hand. So he's going to remove pride from the battle. Uh, this will actually make it so he doesn't have to take a card off of evac control. Uh, we are in Bill's draw phase, so uh, Kyle playing this a little bit preemptively, so that way he can do something on his turn. And there's an Anakin Skywalker. Anakin Skywalker, he's going to use this to take a Death Star 2 sight into his hand. Uh, unfortunately, he already lost the Death Star Sight, so no Death Star Sight for you, sir. But he is cycling that Anakin Skywalker. And there's a Bith Shuffle to shuffle up Bill's used pile. So, Kyle playing a lot of cards to cancel Imp Barrier. So, kind of smart in this current uh, meta. Again, with the blanking of weapons, uh, weapon display and firepower, uh, you're seeing a lot of cards like Imp Barrier, Dodge, It's a Trap, stuff like that being played now because you don't have to worry about that two force damage. Okay, we move on to Kyle's turn. Kyle will activate. He's got 17 force to work with this turn. Uh, he still has a 12 card hand, though. Uh, Bill's probably going to be losing at least two force this turn. <laughs> Jared's saying you're well. Uh, Jared, was that your idea to blank those two cards? Or are you just riding off of Chris's uh, coattails? <laughs> good i'm glad we finally did it okay so bill is going to have to lose two to the drain at mustafar he loses an imp decree from his hand i uh, still got one force to lose at oh that's a big one he loses atlanta dobry did sacrifice combo so his characters won't be able to trans be transported around they won't be able to uh save themselves so and then we see a second sorry about the mess so sorry about the mess is going to target Sar sergeant barrack draws that five so he draws a five that's going to hit the barrack and another five so kyle tracking his fives right now so barrack goes bye bye and if you remember from uh bill's last turn pride is not involved in any of this battle as he was uh clashed of sabers
Uh, Kyle does retrieve with Ray after hitting the barrack. Uh, he does retrieve that class of sabers. And now comes Hera. So we're not going to see Bill, or we're not going to see Kyle take a card off the evac control because he's going to draw two destiny for himself. So he doesn't have to worry about it. So, and if you don't, like I said, uh, Bill only has three characters in this battle and Lando Calrissian coming down. This could not, this is not going to be good for Bill. If you are a fan of the Bill K for the Taco Bill, uh, you might want to tell him not to go down in front of uh, a bead squad. <laughs> oh, wait, that's right. He went down first, and Kyle just said, I have a 21-card hand. I'm going to drop everything I have in my hand and kick the crap out of you. Okay, so Kyle is going to initiate the battle here. Pride is excluded. Uh, before Destiny everything, Kyle is up by 11 in power. Uh, no trooper assault for Bill. Okay, Ray's going to swing. She's going to swing at Iroll. She draws a four, uh, five for Destiny and draws another five. So uh, I, I think Iroll's hit. And again, Kyle has three Destiny in this battle. And Ray, Ray is doing so much work for Kyle. Uh, she's going to retrieve another force and she retrieves that. Sorry about the mess combo. So... Just this turn alone, we've seen her retrieve a Clash of Sabres and a Sorry About the Mess. There's a four for Kyle. And again, these are now we're onto his weapon or his battle destiny, so he draws a four. He draws a Soka for a one. Does he have the Jedi Levitation? No, but he has Hera down. Hera will allow him to cancel it and redraw. He draws a six, a big old six. And he draws a 5, so that's 15 in a Battle Destiny to bring him up to 33. And again, Bill draws a 3 to bring him up to 10, so Bill's down by 23. Uh, I roll doesn't cover any, for doesn't have any forfeits, so Bill is currently at... Oh, Bill has Sith Fury in his hand, so he'll uh, redraw that. Uh, Navarre uh, covers 4 in forfeit. Uh, the other Biker Scout covers three, so that's seven. Draws a three, so that brings him up to ten. So he's got seventeen. He's down by six, or he's down by uh, sixteen right now. And he's got a stack of card, and I feel the conflict. So not a good battle for Bill. Okay, there's the card. He he does stack a card. Oh, he's down by twenty three. I'm sorry, my math is so bad today. Or no, I was right. Ish. Okay, so Bill does have a gick, so that saves him. Okay, so Pride will be able to move now. After Kyle's turn. Uh, Kyle losing the Yoda to Attrition. Uh, Yoda did what he needed to, so that makes sense. Uh, you want to keep the Lando and the Hera up because you I mean you're playing against ISB, so Hera gets you an extra destiny. Lando is just ridiculously good. Kyle draws. Uh, don't see. Don't think he's going to retrieve this turn because he's only got one card left in his force pile, and if he wants to. Keep Lando out. He's got to use that one card. Okay, so he's going to retrieve one. Bill will not stack. Uh... Kyle's going to attempt to retrieve the Help Me Obi-Wan Kenobi and quite a mercenary... So that is retrieved. Oh, he used one first. Okay, so then he has had the one force to keep Lando out there. Okay, we move on to Bill's turn. Ezra will make uh, Kyle activate two. 
Uh, Bill is still able to draw or uh, to force train for two here. But again, with all the retrieval and such that Kyle is doing, it, it's negating this drain. Okay, there goes a Rescue in the Clouds and a Run Luke Run, both from the top of the Kyle's deck. A little bit of an update. Uh, Kyle has 26, so he's got 35 with Hand in Life. Bill has 31 Hand in Life. Okay. Isard coming down to the jet, uh, Jedi Council Chamber, so now he's going to threaten a drain of three there. And Corporal Vandalay coming down as well. But Bill has to do something about that General Pride. Uh, we saw him use the Gick. Now, again, I don't think General Pride is still clashed, so... Yeah, he can, he can move. Uh, we did see Bill lose a Lana Dobry combo. Uh, he might be re uh, playing one or another one, but okay. So he's going to move past his move phase, go into his draw phase, and then just retrieve one. He's retrieving the Corpor Corporal Obrick. Um, I hope Bill has a second gig because things could get really dicey here in a second. Kyle going to use Anakin Skywalker to transport the projection of the Prophecy of the Force over to the walkway. Yeah, he's got... That's the only thing I could think of. He's got the second gick. I, I mean... At the same time, even if Kyle gets rid of the pride, I mean, we'll probably see him play simple tricks and nonsense to cancel that drain of three over at the JCC. So I, I kind of I don't understand that from Bill. Bill could easily have gone down to the Ewok village, considering that Kyle has so many characters. Uh, no, it is an exterior site. Okay, uh, Kyle's going to throw out Yoda, Master of the Force. And Solo, Solo coming down in, at the Cloud City. So, no drains from Kyle. Kyle just saying, you know what? I've got the beat squad. I'm coming down. And he puts a card on Like My Father Before Me. And he'll battle over at the JCC. Oh, and this is why he's doing it. He's got Run Luke Run with he plays a Run Luke Run with Solo. I mean that flips him back, but I don't think he cares because this could be game here really, really, really quick. Bill playing uh, Stormproof Patrol from his hand to come down at the JCC as a react. Kyle has the Odinester combo to cancel it, so that Stormtrooper goes back to Bill's hand. Luke will swing his lightsaber at Vandalay. We're probably going to see him hit the Vandalay. Draws a three. Yeah, that's just enough. And draws a four. So yeah, Vandalay is sliced and diced. And there's a gift of the mentor. Good call, Sean. So that's another th uh, two destiny for Kyle. Draws a four. Or draws a three. Draws a three. I thought it were four because of like my father before me, but only I believe that only works at a battleground site. I could be wrong. Yeah, if Luke's at a battleground, so. Draws 9 total for Battle Destiny, so he's at 22. Bill draws a 5, so he's at 12. Um, down by 10. And I believe Isar covers for 5, so it's 5 and overflow. Uh, 
Yeah, he's got to eat the five overflow because if he's got the second gick, he's going to need it in the other battle. Okay, so he's going to lose Vader. Vengeance. Min. Callus. And an Imp Command. He loses the first three from his hand. He loses the Callus and the Imp Command from his use pile. Okay, so here's that battle over at Cloud City. I'm ready for some slice and dice. Kyle's got three uh, Destiny coming down. Yeah. Oh, Bill doesn't realize he's not clashed. Bill concedes. Oh. Oh, there it is. Yeah. I, I... So well played by Kyle. Kyle taking his time to start off methodically doing what he wanted to do, drawing up, having a big hand, and just coming down with what he needed to win the game. So congrats on Kyle on winning. Uh, Bill, better luck next time, sir. Uh, hopefully you'll get them in game two. Uh, so you know what? While we have a moment, let's go check on some other games. Uh, I know that uh, Bastion is currently streaming. Uh, he is, I believe, streaming the Ryan Saracen and uh, Drew Lichtenstein game. Uh, Timo, uh, Dylan is currently streaming the Chris Goglin game. So, you know what? Let's show a check on our boy, Greg Shaw, member of team 9 million. Uh, Greg is currently playing. Okay. So, you know what? Let's step out of this game really quick. So Greg is playing hunt down V versus the legend. So this one looks kind of rough. Uh, we, it might for bill. Or for Greg, sorry. But you know what? Let's go check on Mr. Baroni really quick. This one, I was told, is a really good game. Uh, looks like it's EBO versus ISB. Uh, EBO tend to be, tends to be favored in this game. Uh, you do a lot of quick damage, and you really can't work off the ground. But this is... Uh, Mr. This is Steve Baroni. He's playing a little bit. Looks like he's playing a little bit different of an ISB. He's playing more of a big blue. Uh, he has the, the the Coruscant system, so he's not using SSA in this match. Uh, looks like his opponent, who is uh, we'll stand by Mike Danboys, member of Team Albany. Uh, he's got the Tantive with the Mon Calamari Admiral there. He's also got, and let's see, he's got Honchu and the Falcon with a General Kraken. Uh, he's got Leia's Resistance Transport with Anakin and Leia. And then, oh, over here at the, uh, the North Market, he's got a Commander Luke on Rogue One. He's got a Dash, and he's got Wedge. Uh, but if you're Baroni, you've got Callus, Veers, and Vader with a Blizzard uh, 2. So nothing to sneeze at. Uh Baroni has a loaded up executor. Uh, he's got Thrawn, Pultirdom, Vandalay, uh, Wol Colonel Wolf, Yularen, Tarkin's Bounty, Tarkin, Piet, and Ozzel. And it looks like Tarkin's Bounty is on Tarkin. Good man. Go Baroni. That makes me happy. Okay, Baroni's going to drain for one at Bespin. Yeah, Steve playing a more of a big blue variant uh, than what we just saw from Bill, which is the super beatdown. Uh, made popular by Team 9 million. Okay, Mike's going to lose a Rebel Leadership from his reserve deck. Mike has 20 cards left in his uh, life force, forehand hand. Steve's got 19, so it's a really close game. I mean, Steve doesn't have resistance out or ultimatum. So those drains are going to be pretty significant. But let's see. Uh, Steve going to cancel Wedge Antilles' game text with Vader. Uh, both players are going to be drawing two Destiny. 
do not believe that Dash and Rogue 12 works with Luke. Casey, I wholeheartedly agree. That I would so I, I don't know who plays magic, but uh, I, I like that idea that Tarkin's bounty on Tarkin should just deplete your opponent's life force. Can we get can we errat of this, please? Jared, I know uh, if you're still watching, uh, I wanted you to proposition it and uh, make this so. So I think if you're Steve, what you want to do here is you want to keep enough power to keep yourself from uh, uh, in play at the North Ridge, but at the same time, you also want to move at least one or two of those characters to the... Well, you can't really move into like the the main power generators just because it's they could react over so it's kind of difficult um if he had a way to get vader into the the interior sites then he could start doing a little bit more damage but okay steve's gonna play tarkin's bounty to look at the top part of his reserve deck Again, this is why Tarkin's Bounty on Tarkin is really good. You get information. It's what ISB is all about. Okay, Steve's going to play Lord Maul with Lightsaber. I'm seeing a lot of Lord Maul with Lightsaber in ISBs, and I'm liking it. Uh-oh, Greg Shaw is upset. That is an upset if I've ever seen one. Greg Shaw losing to Mr. Fernando. So, Fernando Castanian. Uh, I don't want to... I'm sorry, I butchered your, your name. Uh, I want to say it was a Hunt Down V versus a Legend matchup, so... Congrats on Fernando. I'm sending Greg Shaw. That's a big one. I think it's the upset... Uh, it has to be the upset of the... Uh, so far of the tournament, Casey. Okay, Mike's going to play... Uh, use his Don't Do That Again to look for the uh, res a, an immediate effect. He doesn't have any, so Steve gets a free look. I think now Steve can st try and move some of his characters. Uh, I wouldn't start draining just because, again, but... Okay, Steve is up by 10 in power before Destiny. He's got seven cards in his uh, reserve deck. Each of his Destinies are going to be plus one, so... Draws a five... And a six. So that's going to get around the immunity of those speeders. And we're going to see some speeders crash and burn here. Okay, Mike draws a five himself. So that's a pretty good start for Mike. And a four. So no slouch himself. So he draws nine. So brings himself up to 25. So he's only down by 12. Mike has to lose nine or great. Uh, Steve has to lose nine in attrition. I think that's at least Callus and maybe Vader. Uh, Mike has to lose t 11, though, so that's, I want to say, probably Wedge. Yeah, Wedge and his speeder. Uh, so you'll still have the Dash and his speeder and Luke. Luke seems... Uh, Luke's important because you get two destiny. Wedge is important because you add to the, the battle uh, to the four stream, but at this point, you really can't do much else. Okay, so Steve's gonna lose General Veers. Interesting. Okay, Mike does lose the Commander Wedge Antilles. Okay, and there goes the Blizzard 2 for Steve. 
and he loses uh, the rogue one, so he still owes one. Uh, Mike still owes him one in battle damage, so he loses a rebel leader or rebel leadership from his reserve deck. And now we're gonna see Steve move that that big blue ship somewhere. He's gonna move it in front of Hoth. So and then we go on to Mike's turn, or we see we're still in Steve's turn, so he's gonna go into his move phase. Uh, I think if you're Steve, you don't really move. Because you want to, you got to get rid of that Luke. If you can get rid of that Luke and take control of that North Ridge, you're going to look really, really strong here. But you're probably going to see him bring some of those characters down from the Executor down to the North Ridge here. Uh, and I go bye bye. Okay, I am back. Okay, so yeah, he's going to bring down Tarkin and Vandalay. So, I'll be able to start canceling some of those destinies that Luke would uh, do in the battle. Uh, I think if you're Mike, you don't battle, but you're going to drain. You're going to drain for pretty nice. You're going to get drains of... So your drains are plus two, so you're going to get drains of three and three because it's minus one here at Coruscant. Uh, so everybody stay tuned today. Oh, we do have a giveaway. We have four giveaways today. Uh, doing packs, preview packs for set 13. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. This is his first official Star Wars tournament. Beating Greg Shaw in his first game is amazing. Okay, so we go on to Mike's turn. Mike will drain a Coruscant. Again, he hits for three. Uh, Steve loses. I can't shake him. We must accelerate our plans and Stormtrooper Patrol. He also loses a They Must Never Leave the City, Death Squadron Assignment, and Corporal or Commander Majeric. Uh He can easily get those some of those back uh mike's going to retreat from the north ridge so now steve is going to be able to drain there for one uh i'm going to imagine that mike will retreat from naboo or from uh, ha so steve's going to be able to drain for three <laughs> wow casey uh, that's a statement So, yeah, I think right now, I mean, Steve's going to be taking six a turn. And the. the... Okay, so I, I think he can start to invade on Hoth, and that's pretty much what he needs to do to win this game. So, okay, Mike's going to play a out of commission ter uh, and transmitted turn terminated uh, to take a card out of Steve's Lost Pile, make it go out of play. Ah, uh, that's a big card that Steve could have used. That uh, need he needs uh, Admiral Shirnu on his lost pile. That's and there's another one. So Mike had two in his hands, so he's gonna put them back. Uh, he gets a spaceport docking bay as well. So he got one ISB agent, and then he got a docking bay that really didn't come into play this game. Okay, moving on to Steve's turn. 
Uh, he's going to be draining two and two because of Lord Maul. So, yeah, he needs to move one of these, some of these characters over to the main power generators because that would be a drain of two there. Okay, Mike losing two to the drain at Hoth. This is a rebel leadership from and a gold leader in gold one. Now, I think what another card uh, that would help Steve is a stalker. If Steve had the stalker at some point, being able to follow some of those ships around is what, what he needs to do. Okay, so there's a drain at the North Bridge. It is a drain of one right now. He's going to add one with Lord Maul. Otherwise, it would have been a drain of three. And I think Mike would have grabbed uh, Ultimatum to make it a drain of two. So it is a drain of two. There goes a red eight from hand from, from Mike. And he loses a Lando, Scal uh, Lando Calrissian Scoundrel. So he loses a Destiny five. So, I mean, Lost Piles are pretty even. I mean, this game's really even, especially because Mike's doing six a turn, where Steve's only doing four. One of the big differences is Steve's retrieving one, so it's a difference of one right now. Both players have a lot of cards on table, but... Okay, the, there's the stalker. So now you can start following some of the ships around and maybe try and get a battle. Uh, I think the best one for him probably is that Han Chewie and the Falcon. I mean, out of them, I mean, there's an Imperial, there's a Mon Calamari Admiral. Uh, I believe that just barely has enough over there. Uh, he could have probably went down to uh, Coruscant with the Stalker. Uh, I mean, the Admiral only has four for forfeit. So he could have came down. If he could have got rid of that Admiral, could have negated some of the drains. Uh, I mean, the Stalker does draw Destiny on its own, so... And EBO does not have the best destiny. It really doesn't. So, I mean, Mike did just uh, put two fives back in his deck. So that could have helped him. But, yeah, he's got to do, he's got to do something to get rid of. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying like he could have, um, he needs to do something to negate some of these big drains. Um. Yeah, that's a good point, Nick. But let's see what Steve is going to do. He's in his move phase. Okay, he's going to shuttle some guys up. Okay, so he shuttles Tarkin to the Stalker. And then he's going to move Colonel Wolfgularen and Ozzel onto the Stalker as well. So now the Stalker is going to be basically. Oh, that's a good, that's another good point. That's a, that's a, yeah. Uh, he's going to move basically a lot of these characters over to the Stalker. Uh, all that's left on the Executor is the Piet. So I think he's going to just part the Piet at Hoth, keep it there, saying, "Uh, I I have a big scary." ship and you don't have haven here so i'm not worried and then he's, yeah he's gonna move the stalker in front of the honcho and the falcon so now he can follow that around i mean he's still losing six a turn because he unless he has like a, a cold feet if he had cold feet here that'd be great because then it would be reduce him uh that drain down to two and two um 
he did lose the red eight, so there's gone. I mean, Mike does only have five cards in his hand, or four cards in his hand, so there is that. But we'll see. I mean, the executor is immune to attrition less than twelve. That's that's hard to crack, especially with e even with EBL. So. Okay, he's going to retrieve a Stormtrooper Patrol. Looks like Mike did play, uh, put his Walkling out of play, so. Got to think Steve is digging for a uh, cold feet to get him to uh, resistance. Okay, so we move on to Mike's turn. So, again, Mike's now going to have to start paying to drain. I mean, he's got the force to do it. So, and I think he's more than happy to pay six to drain for six. So, And action is on Mike at this point. Players have a 14-minute time difference right now. Uh, I do not know if that's going to come into play, I'm, but we will shall see. Uh, we are in Mike's activate phase. Uh, he hasn't activated anything, so let's see if he activates some here. Okay, we are still on Mike's turn. He's still taking his time thinking about what he wants to do this turn. Okay, so yeah, so Mike's going to activate everything, bring him to 15 in his force pile. Mike took a little bit of time there to think about that. I mean, I understand wanting to think about it and figure out what you want to do, but time is of the essence. <laughs> okay, so he's going to drain at Solace. That's not Jakku, that's a Solace. That's the car we haven't, I haven't seen in forever. So he drains, and Steve loses Callus, Tarkin, and I can't shake him. Uh, the drain of Coruscant, he loses the Storm Stormtrooper Patrol, Akashik, and there goes a Cold Feet. Oof. That is a card Steve did not want to lose. Uh, and for, I think... Ugh.
Okay, still in Mike's control phase. He's got he's at under ten minutes now though. So I, I'm not saying that time's gonna come into play, but again, Mike's now has to Mike has to really be concerned about time. Uh, we saw that yet happen a couple turn uh, in a couple games yesterday, uh, most notably against Dylan versus uh, Jodacast. Uh, Jodacast had a bunch of time, and I'm going to say he's got that game pretty much locked up. But unfortunately, he just took too much time, and Dylan actually was able to pull the game out. So. Yeah, and that and that's again, Dylan advanced on that, so that was pr a pretty good game for Dylan. Okay, so Mike is going to play Bright Hope with Yoda, Keeper of the Force. Um, I mean, Steve's not going to... I mean, Steve's not only going to do two points of damage. Okay, so he moves the Hanchu and the Falcon over to in front uh, with the Tana 4. I don't like that move at all. Like, Steve can now... He's only been losing three Force now instead of six. So all Steve has to do is move the Stalker in front of the Bright Hope and start running with the, the Executor. I mean, he's doing three points of damage now, so... We, uh, let's, I mean, this game is, is not over yet, people. Okay, so now move on to Steve's turn. Steve's going to be draining for three this turn, and he's going to be retrieving. So the damage is equal, and Steve is retrieving. Uh, Mike has 15 cards in life force, two in hand. Steve has nine in life force, two in hand. So he's currently down by six. And yeah, I, I can see that. Uh, it made so much sense. Okay, so, so we see Steve drain for two, loses a Rebel Barrier, and Green Leader in gold one, drains at one at Bespin. There goes a Obi-Wan in Radiant Seven. Yeah, I, I understand that, but again, like the biggest problem is he's negating a lot of the damage. Like, you just take away three d points of damage. I mean, you're only doing two to Steve. He's doing three. Well, you're, you're subtracting three. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and the stalker would have battled, so yeah, that's a good point. 
Like, I mean, I realize the Stalker would have followed and battled, but I I'm just thinking, like, you need to at least try and keep the damage up as much as you can. Uh, Mike's only doing three points of damage this turn. Yeah, I was going to say, if there's an Ice Storm and Steve doesn't have the shield out, that's going to be game. Steve is looking at the top card of Mike's deck. Uh, Steve only, I mean. Oh, you are correct. He does have the shield out. I think him playing the impressive enforcement shield might have been what, if he loses this game, him not having resistance is the big is what. Oh, here comes the vengeance down. So Steve has the ships that he he has ships. I mean, I, I you want to say that he's going to move the stalker over to Hoth and then move the executor over to Solist, or yeah, if he had an overwhelm, I mean, if he had an overwhelm him, that would be big. Like, he's not worried about destiny. He just wants to overpower. I mean, he's only got one card in hand, though, so. Yeah, I think if he if he can get the executor over to Solace to start draining for two there, that would be pretty good. Okay, so we have a misclick from Steve. He wanted to move. I mean, I don't know if that's a misclick. Like... Mike, you got to make a decision here. Let him miss a revert or just you're eating up too much clock, dude. Yeah, I, I agree. Like Steve retreat. If he was still in his deploy, if he was still in his draw phase, you could have easily, but. Okay, so Mike's going to activate. He's going not going to allow uh, Steve to uh, revert. Yeah, I, I think he wanted to move the, the two ships around. That, ma that makes 100% sense to me. I, I think that's a mental error on Steve. Uh, so right now, life, uh, light has 12 horse left. Steve has 10. Uh, 
Lights up by three. Okay, so there's a drain of three from Mike. Steve's going to still have to lose three. Loses a Stormtrooper Patrol, an Imp Command, and Colonel Wolf Gilarin. No problem. If you guys wanted to ask anything, like if you guys want to see who's on the, the ships and stuff, just let me know. I am here for you. Uh, we have a lot of people in chat right now. I love it. Okay, action still is on mic at this point. Yeah, Mike can move to the two other systems. Like, he can split the ships, but at the same time, if he does that, Steve's going to leave the Vengeance there. He's going to move the Executor to... Yeah. I, I think if he reacts to the ground drain, though... Okay, now, this I do like. He him. He, um, the only problem is... I. Yeah, Dash in Rogue 10 doesn't react, so he's going to have to move those now. Or Rogue 12. I I always miss that. But, I mean, that's going to make it so Steve can't... So he's going to negate the strain here for two. But like I said, Dash can't react. And I, I... Yeah. Yeah, he has to move over. That, yeah, exactly. He has to move over right now before he draws. So I don't know if he's going to make Steve... If he's going to react here or what, but... Okay, so there's the Bright Hope. Okay, okay, so yeah, he is moving the speeders over. Yeah, that's the biggest thing is Mike is might run out of time at this point because he's only got three minutes left. So he needs to go through the actions as fast as he can. Uh... I mean, he can't really move the the Honchu and the Falcon and Holdo. Okay, Mike going to play out of commission to get a card out of Steve's lost pile. Uh, I like this just because, I mean, one, is putting a card back onto his used pile. Oh, Steve's going to grab that, so he can't even... Uh, so he's going to be able to... So he places Colonel Wolf Gularn out of play, but Steve grabs that. So, one, if Mike wants to play another one right there... Okay, so Steve's going to activate. He activates a three. So, I mean, he's going to be able to do drains uh, a drain of one this turn. 
so the way the clock work is, so each player has their own set of clock. Like each player is given, I want to say, forty five minutes to work with themselves, and it only is running when it's your action. So yeah, I believe it works like chess. Ah, oh, Bastion's in the chat too. Glad to see you, Bastion. I don't know how many other games are currently going on right now. Looks like this game is going on and Pat Johnson versus uh, Brian Twilliger. So, two really solid games, looks like. Okay, Steve is going to... He did activate. He is still in his activate phase, so he's going to look at with, look with Tarkin. Ah, and I think that's, so I'm going to say this, like those Brian and Mike are two all, Team Albany guys. They're just getting back to the game. So that just shows that like Steve is a player who is really familiar with Gemp and that they, he's familiar with this clock. Mike and Brian are players who are kind of new to Gemp. And at that point, they don't know, like, the clock is a thing. You have to be familiar on, like, your time. You can't take every... I know Star Wars CCG, especially in real life, is a very methodically based game. On Gep, it's a whole different other atmosphere. And, and we're seeing that in this game right now in particular. Okay, so Steve uh, does drain at Bestman. Mike will lose a Bausch. So, it's interesting that he plays Bausch over like, uh, General Leia. I like General Leia in EBO because when you have cards like Ray or Vice Admiral Holdo, you can actually retrieve those re uh, resistant characters. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm going to say this. Steve is playing a game. I, I He is playing his game. He's playing it well. He's playing methodical. I understand that. I, don't, I am not faulting either player. I am saying this is just experience. Steve has been playing on Gep for quite a while now. And I understand. Like, he has played in the OCS. He's played it well in the OCS. Mike is... I haven't seen Mike play recently. So I don't know if he's kind of new to it or what. So... I'm just going on what I know, and I know that as an when I first got into Gemp, I timed out a lot. I've seen a lot of people time out. I know Reed Smith hates Gemp because he he times out almost every game. So So I mean, yeah, like Steve is he moved. He does. He, he drained. He moved. This is what this game is coming down to right now. It is. This is a chess match. So again, I'm not saying that either player is. No, I, I'm not. I don't think that Steve is saying, "Oh, I'm going to take every little action." Like that turn when Steve wanted to move, I legitimately thought he would move there, and him. Realizing him as a mistake and stuff, that does happen. I, Steve, Steve is one of the probably the classiest guys in Star Wars, so. Yeah. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna commentate the game at this point. Uh Steve did try to play a missile accelerator plane to put a five back onto his deck. Uh Mike's gonna grab that so that way it's essentially a force loss at this point. And there's a drain of three for Mike. Steve does have three cards in his hand, so he could lose easily those. Lose those. There's a second Weem up. He loses a force push, and he's going to lose an Erica. I notice it's Erica non V, so that's that's a card that I see a lot of play. I, I like a lot card, especially against like Legend. Uh, right now, with all the hit code, though, it might not be as good because you are running into those Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker's or Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight. Uh, but against like Legend, it's really good. All the other decks that play don't play Luke, really good. So okay, so Mike's going to initiate a battle at the Hoth Ridge. Okay, both Mike is going to get two Destiny. Steve is only going to get one. Uh, Mike gets two, even though Yoda is there. 
Yeah, I know. That's why I said it's Erica non. It's Erica V. I'm sorry. Mike draws a five. And he also draws a one. Oof. Okay, so it brings him up to twenty uh to twenty one. He's uh Steve is down by nine right now, but let's see what Steve draws. Steve draws a six. So that's gonna bring him up to eighteen. So Steve's only down by three, but I mean he is not uh six to nutrition. Uh, I wanna say it's gonna be callous. And if you're Mike, yeah, you lose Anakin. Yep, there it is. Steve loses. Yeah, I agree. Mike didn't have the time for the battle because each action is going to eat like five seconds off his clock. So, And now we go into the move phase. Yeah, he can't stick around in space at either of those systems. So he's going to have to move. So he's going to consolidate over onto Hoth. Uh, Steve, I... I wouldn't move with the stalker. I want that drain of two there. Uh, Cause he's actually going to be able to drain for three. Uh, now he could drain for two or for three here and two here. Oh, Steve's going to move with the stalker. Interesting. Okay, and Mike's going to shuttle down Kraken. Steve's going to cancel it. Yeah, I think Steve wins on clock. Yeah. Yeah, doesn't matter. Steve just won. So, congrats. To, uh, you know what? Well played by both players. And, and like I said, it just came down to experience with Gem. Okay, so that's all of game one. Okay, so uh, that's it for game one, everybody. We'll be back with game two momentarily as soon as Casey is done with the pairings. Uh, until then, I will step out for a second, and uh, we'll be back um, here in the next five or ten minutes. See everybody then.